Okay, it's been 15 minutes. Hopefully you've taken your pear out. Um, and we're just going to leave it there for a few minutes just to cool slightly before we slice it in half and we can get on and roll out our puff pastry. So we just need to lightly flour our work surface with plain flour. Okay. And then pop our puff pastry on top and then a little bit of plain flour onto your rolling pin. Get this out of the way. Okay, and we just need to roll this out. I've probably got more, much more than we need here of puff pastry, but we can roll it out nice and thin. All we're going to be doing is we're going to chop the pear in half, and we need enough puff pastry to wrap around half of a pear. So that will give you some indication of, of how much we need. So every couple of rolls just lift it from the work surface just to check that it's not sticking and you can turn it over, redistribute the flour underneath, just nice and easy. And we want to roll this out really nice and thinly. Just checking it's not sticking. I think we're almost there. Okay, so hopefully yours will be rolled out. It's almost as thinly as you can roll the pastry without it um, without it breaking, and we can get on with the pear. So we just need to. There's a few little things we need to do. Obviously, we need to get make sure you get rid of your cloves. So that wouldn't be good to keep in there. So knowing that you've got those rid of and then we're going to just chop the top off and then we're going to cut it in half down the middle okay. like that and now we're going to put it flat side down and then just cut off this bit okay we go. And the same with the other one. So flat side down. And just chop the end off. Now turn them back over and we're just going to get rid of the core. So this should be, it shouldn't be too hot to handle now. And so you can see where it is in the middle. So just with a little knife, just should be quite soft now. Just run your knife around the outline of the core and then we'll just slowly cut it out. Doesn't matter if it doesn't look very pretty. Just take your time. There you go. Just working it in from the edges until you've it should finally just come away. There we go. With the core and then do the same on the other one. So it's only a little small core in a in a pair. There we go. And I'm just gonna cut the puff pastry in half just to, so we've got, well, again, this is more puff pastry than what I'll need, but just cut it in half, it just makes it easier to, to manage so that we're going to do one at a time. And then we're going to turn our uh, pears face down and then we just need to wrap them in the pastry. So taking one of the sheets of pastry, just drape it over the pear, like that. And now all we need to do now is find the outline of the pear and press down. See, so just running your fingers round, just finding the outline of the pear, just so that the puff pastry is hugging the pear. We've got like a, a little pear mould. And then we just need to press down 
all the way around just to create really nice outline. Yeah. All the way around, just press down with your fingers. And then we're just going to cut out the outline. But we're going to leave just about a centimetre gap all the way around. So if you see how I do this, centimetre gap. Just all the way around. Don't worry about the shape too much. There we go. Hopefully this should lift off. There we go. So that's the one, and we just need to do the same with the other pair. Get rid of the, the core. So just drape it, the pastry over the pair, and then with your fingers find the outline. And then press down to highlight the outline of the pair. Go and then trim round the pastry. There we go. So you should be left with two little mounds like that. So lastly what we need to do is just flip them over, either use a knife or if you've got one use your palette knife. We're just going to turn them over and sprinkle the pears with some brown sugar before popping them onto a baking tray. Just turn them over, just to ease it off the white surface. Okay. I'm just going to sprinkle it with some brown sugar. It's just, you see, just a little bit of sugar. And it'll just make it go really nice and caramelised. The same on the other one. So you can bring in our baking tray and then pop them face down like that onto the baking tray. Okay, and just before we pop this in the oven, I'm just going to tell you about something. When you cook these, there's a chance that when the pastry rises, that the pastry will fall off the pear. If that happens, it's not ruined, don't worry, because in, afterwards we can just pop the pears back in and it'll all be absolutely fine. So we just need to pop this into the oven. And if you're anything like me, you just need to give your hands a quick rinse and then after that we'll be getting on and making the mulled wine reduction. Okay. So I'm just using two glasses of mulled wine. It's about 175 mils each glass, but just normal glasses. There we go. And we can turn the heat on full power. I'm using the largest burner on full power. And we just need to add in two teaspoons of sugar. Okay, and just give this a little stir just to dissolve the sugar and what we're going to do is we're going to leave this on the high heat the whole time so from 12 minutes from now and what that'll do just on the high heat bubbling away until it's really really reduced down and you've got a syrupy consistency so from 12 minutes from now just 
just keep an eye on it in the final minute and it will have reduced down to a syrupy consistency. If it's still really, really thin like this, um, then it needs a little bit more. Don't worry about the pastry, that can take a minute more. The main thing is getting the mulled wine reduction to the right consistency. So it's just started to thicken. It will all bubble up, there will be hardly any of it left, but it will taste absolutely fantastic. And when you come back, we'll just have to finish up, make things look pretty and serve. So 12 minutes from now.